Hey guys, it's Manager Kylie, and in today's video, I am gonna go through the 5 1 rotation for volleyball. So, today I'm gonna go through a 5 1 rotation for volleyball. I actually do have another video on this on my channel, but that video has a outside follow setter pattern to this and I thought I'd do another version of it with the middle following the setter. They're very similar but there are a few positional differences in how you want to set up based on the players you have on the court and the order you have them in in your rotation. So I thought I'd go through today and give you a middle follow setter version of the 5-1 rotation. But if you guys are interested in more content like this, definitely the subscribe button, turn on the bell so you get notified every time I upload. I post a new video every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I will be linking both that video of the 5-1 rotation and a playlist at the end with a lot of information on volleyball. So I hope you guys enjoy and we're going to dive into the different rotations. So I'm going to go through the six different rotations and for each of the six rotations there's three different things that I'm going to be showing you. One is your rotational base, one is your serve receive positioning, and then one is your base positioning. And I'm going to go through each one in detail on how everything should be. So for rotation number one, and you may start in two, three, four, you don't have to start in this first rotation. So understand that these are just the order you're rotating around depending on where you start. You might start with two and then end with one. Just be aware of that. I'm starting with the setter in one for my first rotation. So your rotational base for this has your setter in one. This is a focused on the setter rotation. Five one is focused on the setter. And then you have your two outsides, your two middles, and then I have the R as your right side or your opposite. You may have a second setter or something like that. But where this is a one setter focus, I decided to put the R to show that opposite hitter. And this is a middle follow setter. So that means you're going setter, then middles in two, outsides in three, and so forth and so on. And then you wanna make sure you check your opposites so that everything matches opposite of each other. So for your rotational base, we have our setter in one, middle in two, outside one in three, our right side in four, our middle two in five, and our other outside in six. For serve receive, your goal is to make the job the easiest for your setter. You want them to be able to get to that second ball. So the way we do this is our setter and our middle stack on that right side of the court. They're going along that right hand side. Your outside is going to shift over, same with your middle, and then your right side is gonna drop to be that third passer, and then your outside is just kinda up out of the way in front of the net. You do wanna make sure that you're aware of your crosses, so you're both your front and back crosses and your side crosses to make sure that all your players are in the right position or that you're in the right position. Your right side is to the left of your outside one, your right side is in front of your middle two, so even though they're lining up right here, they do have to stay in front of that middle position. Your middle one is in front of your setter as they're stacked on the side, and then your outside two and your setter are, um, make sure that your setter is to the right of your outside two. So that's kind of how these are read, and you wanna make sure that nothing's crossing, because the middle's in front of that setter, it's gotta stay, they have to stay in front of the setter. You also have to make sure everything kind of follows this rotational base positionally. The people that are in front of each other need to stay in front of each other, and the people that are next to each other need to stay on that certain side next to each other. And then your base position. The base positions are gonna be very similar for all the rotations. Your right side and your setter are always gonna be on the right side of the court. Your outsides are always gonna be on the left side of the court, and your middles are gonna be in the middle. It just will depend on who's front row versus back row, whether it's your right side, your setter, your middle ones, or, and, or your middle two, or your outside one, outside two. Now for rotational base for serve receive two. So this is when your setter is in the middle back. So setter, middle one is in one, outside one in two, right in three, middle two in four, outside two in five, and your setter is in six. For this one, this is a stacking in the middle. So your right side and your setter are going to stack in the middle. You have to make sure that your right side does stay closer to the net than your setter. And then your middle two is going to just drop over to the T and pass from that corner spot. You also have your outside one is dropping to be an extra passer. Your other outside two is there and your middle one. So you are shifting slightly. You do have to make sure because your outside one is dropping that your outside one stays in front of your middle and that your setter stays to the left of your middle one. So there, this there's like a line right here. Your setter has to stay to the left of your middle one. So if you want your middle to be farther over to the left, you have to move that stack over to the left. And then your base position, you have your right side in the front row, your setter in the back row, your middle two and your outside one in the front, and then your outside two and your middle one in the back. For position number three, your rotational base, your setter is now in five. So you have 
outside one, right side, middle two, outside two, setter, and then middle one for your six positions. This one you're stacking on the left-hand side of the court. So your outside two and your setter are going to stack on the left-hand side. Your middle one just gonna kind of be up in the in front of the net out of the way. And then you have your middle one, your outside one, and your right side is dropping to be an extra passer. So your overlaps for this one, you have to make sure that your setter stays to the left of your middle one, your outside two stays in front of your setter, and that your right side stays in front of that outside hitter one. So this position has to stay in front of that one. And then your base, your outside two and your middle two and your right side are your front row, and then your setter, your middle one, and your outside one are your back row. Now the positions gets a little bit easier once your setter transitions to that front row position. So now that your setter is in four, it does become a little bit easier. This is more similar to running like a four two. You have only two hitters at this time, so it's a little bit easier to control. So your right side is in one, middle two in two, outside two in three, setter in four, middle one in five, and your outside one in six. Your serve receive here, you just have it set up. It's actually set up very similar to that previous serve receive. You just don't have to worry about as many overlaps because all these players are now back row players. You don't have to worry about the same overlaps, but your setter is here. Just has to make sure that they stay until the serve is contacted to the left of the outside hitter two, but they are there. They're just gonna run across and get where they need to be to set the ball. You're setting this up so that it's easier for your setter. These two are usually squat down for either to be extra passes. If you need extra passers, so you find that your back row is having problems, you can drop these two kids to about the 10 foot line and then have your setter run across the net as well if you need some extra passers. So you have these two, you could have them set up short around the 10 foot line with your outside and your middle here and then have your setter run across the front. It's kind of up to you whether you want those as extra passers or if you feel like they cause more traffic when they drop back. And then your base positions, your middle two and your outside two are in the front row with your setter. And then your right side and your middle one and your outside one are in the back row. Now for number five, your rotational base on this one now has your setter in three. So we have middle two, outside two, setter, middle one, outside one, right side in six. This one sets up pretty easily. It's everybody in the back row stays where they already are. Your middle and your outside drop to their respective corners, so by the T of the 10 foot line. So your middle just drops to the left hand side, your outside drops to the right hand side, and your setter stays in the middle. Your middle usually hits outside for one, and your outside will hit right side for one, and then you have your setter right there in the middle ready to set. This one's a nice easy position. Everybody's pretty close to where they need to be. And, and once the ball goes over, your outside two just has to get to base. Your middle one is already there, really in the middle. Your setter, and then outside, middle two, and right side are your back. Position number six. This is when your front row is positionally where they need to be. Um, this one's definitely an easier one where they're already in the positions you need them to be in. So we have for this one, your setter is now in two. So you go outside two, setter, middle one, outside one, right side, and middle two. Your serve receive positions, your setter is just gonna be in their setting position. Your middle is just gonna be already back around that 10 foot line. Same with your outside. So they are there as more passers. They're ready to pass that ball if it comes up short. And then your right side, middle two and outside two are just three across passing. And then once the ball goes over the net, they drop to their base. So your front row is already really in their base position. So all you have to do is get your back row to their base position, which is your right side on the right hand side of the court, then your middle two and your outside two into their base position. And that's kind of all the basics. Again, you might not start in six, you might start in one, you might start in three. Just be aware where you're starting on the court. Some people like to start with their setter in the front row to start, some like it in the back row. Depends on who your top servers are and how you want to position everybody on the court. But that's the basics of a five one with the middle following setter. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. So that's kind of an overview of the five one rotation. Obviously you can have those substitutions to slightly alter the way it is on the court but this has your one setter setting all the way around, your five hitters and your one setter setting all the way around. So this is really helpful if you only have one setter. Um, there are six twos and four twos if you have multiple setters, but this is a great option if you only have one setter or if you wanna only use one setter during the game. But if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit the subscribe button so you can see more content on this channel. Like this button if you did and I will see you guys next Wednesday.